Lynn Williams is going to Paris. The U.S. Women's National Team just named the roster for the 2024 Paris Summer Olympics. In this video, we are going to break down the roster and give some predictions. And we're also going to discuss Alex Morgan being left off the roster. So here's the roster. In goal, we have Alyssa Nair and Casey Murphy. The defenders are Emily Fox, Emily Sonnet, Naomi Gurma, Tierna Davidson, Jenna Nicewanger, and Casey Kruger. In the midfield, we have Lindsay Horan, Rose Lavelle, Katarina Macario, Sam Coffey, and Corbin Albert. And then the forwards, Mal Swanson, Sophia Smith, Trinity Rodman, Crystal Dunn, and Jaden Shaw. Our alternates are Jane Campbell, Hal Hirschfeld, Croy Bethune, and Lynn Williams. Fun fact here, none of these players on this roster have won Olympic gold yet in their careers. The last time the U.S. won gold at the Olympics was in 2012, so huge opportunity for every single player on this roster. First and foremost, it is so hard and so exciting to make an Olympics roster. I want to talk a little bit about how it feels when your phone rings and it's the coach and you know they're going to tell you if you've made it or not. Um, I remember in 2021 waiting to hear from Vlatko. It was the morning and I was on my way to practice and he called and told me that I had made the team, but I was really waiting to hear if Christy had made the team too. So I remember we got on this cute little family FaceTime and Christy and I told our parents that we both made it and that we were both going to the Olympics. Um, it's such an incredible moment of like heightened anticipation, just seeing their, your coach's name on your phone screen and knowing that they have this information that you want. So there's no small talk. You kind of just get on and you're like, please tell me. It must be a really weird experience for the coaches to have to make so many of these calls. But it's definitely a really human to human moment where you feel really, really grateful to the coach if they give you good news in that moment. Um, so I can't wait to hear from all my friends how that moment felt for them this time. This roster is just so small. 18 players for six games is a tiny, tiny roster. And I know there's been talk over the years of maybe changing it. Maybe the, the group of alternates should just be fully embedded into the roster and it should just be a roster of 22. But this team is so competitive that 18 spots is like almost absurd. These players have been training and fighting for this for years and years. And when a coach is creating a roster this small, they really are looking at players' entire body of work. Like, how are they playing for their club team? Are they scoring goals for the national team? Are they still growing and learning? Do they have a lot of potential for the future? There are just so many factors. Are they versatile? And these players have put all of their lives into this. And so I really just wanted to start off by saying what an incredible accomplishment it is to make this small of a roster on the most competitive team that I've ever witnessed. So now this team is heading to Paris. World tournaments in general just ask so much from you. It's like a month straight of giving all that you can give. There's really no downtime and no rest. If you're not playing in the game, traveling, training, or in a team meeting, you're eating, you're sleeping, you're watching film. It's just a really, really demanding environment. And I've been a part of the Olympics as both an alternate and as a rostered player. Uh, for alternates specifically, I wanted to touch on how important their role is. I've said in the past that alternate players really have to have the right personality and demeanor to fill this role. They can't be so upset that they didn't make the 18, that they allow that to seep through and rub off on the rest of the team. They have to really take pride in the role that they have and do whatever they can to help those 18 players prepare for the games and really do whatever's asked of them for the sake of the team. I remember in 2016, we were in Brazil and there were a couple of days that the four of us didn't really get to train because the staff and all of the resources of the team had to go to the top 18 players and me and Heyo and Ashlyn and Sonnet, we just kind of had to like run our own workouts. And I think I learned so much from that experience, from being around them, from recognizing that our mood and personality and demeanor really did have an impact on the rest of the team. Um, but I feel like these alternates that we just named are all incredible people and will do a great job filling this role. I want to talk quickly about Emma Hayes and these difficult decisions that she had to make picking this roster. Emma just got here. She's been around the team for like a week. 
she's basing these decisions a lot off of preconceived notions about these players and advice from the staff that's already been in and around the team, like Twyla Kilgore. In really just a few days of personal interaction and seeing them train and play against South Korea. So while this must have been really, really difficult to create this roster with such limited time with the team, I think that Emma covered a lot of bases. What I'm really seeing here is that the players who are most versatile are really being valued. Emily Sonnet, she can easily slot into center back, outside back, or the six. Crystal Dunn can play literally anywhere on the field. Kat Macario can play in the midfield or in the nine. Jaden Shaw could be a 10 or a winger or even a nine. I think that this selection of players who are very versatile will lend itself to the tactical flexibility that Emma has shown is her coaching style throughout the years. What I really liked seeing in those South Korea games was Mal Swanson, who's playing winger. She can kind of drop in more central and lower at times into that really dangerous midfield pocket, almost as a second number 10. And then she can turn and dribble out of the midfield. Another thing I really liked from those South Korea games that I think is something that will play into Emma Hayes' style of coaching is Jenna Nicewanger being such a dangerous offensive threat. So I'm really going to be paying attention in these next couple of send-off games and when we get to the Olympics to how Jenna continues getting high up the field from that left-back position. She's been providing crosses. She's been taking shots from distance. Her offensive prowess is something that I think has really solidified her spot on this roster. I also just have to add here, Corbin Albert's selection to this roster is upsetting to a lot of people, especially within our women's soccer community. Earlier this year, Corbin had shared some homophobic and transphobic content on her social media. While the team has expressed that they are handling it all internally and Corbin did issue an apology on her social media, fans and supporters of the team haven't been privy to any work or ongoing conversations regarding the situation. Some players and even head coach Emma Hayes have addressed this issue, maybe even suggesting an opportunity for us all to accept and move on. And while I believe that people should be given an opportunity to change and grow, There are endless opportunities to demonstrate this growth to the community that has been hurt. The actions that were a problem were out in the open. And so to some extent, the growth should be out in the open as well. And I think that that is what's missing from this equation right now. My prediction for Emma's starting 11 is probably Alyssa Nair in goal, Naomi Gurma, Tierna Davidson, Jenna Neiswanger, and Emily Fox across the back. Lindsay Horan, Rose Lavelle, and Sam Coffey in the midfield, and then Mal Swanson, Trinity Rodman, and Sophia Smith across the top. Again, I think that this is a fluid group. A lot of these players can be really dangerous in more than one position. They can exchange. We might find them moving around a lot on the field in that starting group, but I also wouldn't be surprised if we saw this lineup rotate a lot game to game. These games are only three days apart. It's Almost impossible to recover to play 90 minutes and then 90 minutes again and then 90 minutes again with such a short break. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if this group and starting group really rotated and had some changes. Um, And this could be a signal of strength for the U.S. Women's National Team. In such a short tournament with so many games and a quick turnaround, we have incredible depth, more so, I think, than a lot of other countries. So I think that our depth is a really, really great sign for a tournament like this. Unfortunately, there were some snubs on this roster. Alex Morgan specifically, Olympic gold medalist, two-time World Cup champion, one of the most famous, celebrated, successful names and players in the whole world. Alex Morgan is a huge name to leave off of this roster. This is the first time the U.S. Women's National Team will be heading to a major tournament without Alex Morgan on the roster since 2008. Alex just tweeted this. Today, I'm disappointed about not having the opportunity to represent our country on the Olympic stage. This will always be a tournament that is close to my heart, and I take immense pride any time I put on the crest. In less than a month, I look forward to supporting this team and cheering them on alongside the rest of our country. LFG. First and foremost, I feel for Alex. We were teammates for a long time. She's had one of the longest and most successful careers in a U.S. Women's National Team uniform, and it's got to be a tough pill to swallow being left off a roster. She does only have three goals so far this calendar year for both club and country. She scored in that Challenge Cup game for San Diego at the very beginning of the NWSL season. And then she scored twice in the Gold Cup after she was called into camp as an injury replacement player for the U.S. Women's National Team. 
So I think there have been warning signs for this, like initially being left off that Gold Cup roster. Um, but honestly, it's still really surprising. And it's such a big move to leave a player of this caliber off of a major roster. Emma Hayes is making a statement with this. But I don't think it will be long before we see Alex's name on the score sheet for San Diego again. If I know her at all, she'll be wanting to prove herself even more now. And to be fair, this Olympics roster is so hard to make. The forwards who were available for selection for this is full of players that feel impossible to leave off. That brings me to another potential snub, Lily Johannes. I thought Lily really made a case for herself with her performance in the midfield against South Korea. She looked more like a veteran than a newbie. She scored a calm and composed goal in her first cap. It's a really tough break for Lily, who undeniably has a bright future. Hopefully that's with the U.S. My predictions for top goal scorer, I have to go Mal Swanson. She has been in such incredible goal scoring form. Um, I'm so excited to see her play in this tournament after she missed out on the World Cup last summer. My prediction for super sub, I'm going Jaden Shaw. Again, I think that this starting 11 is going to rotate a lot, but I can see a player like Jaden Shaw who has that tactical flexibility, subbing in to every game, getting minutes consistently in every game and making a huge impact offensively. MVP of the team. I know that's not really an Olympics award that's given out, but I'm going to go Mel Swanson again. I just think that she is primed to absolutely take over the summer. I can't wait to watch her do it. And my Iron Woman is going to go to Lindsay Horan. Lindsay has been playing so many minutes for club and country over the past couple of years. And I think that she is in the right time of her career to play every single minute for the U.S. Women's National Team. There are not as many midfield subs available as usual. And I think that somebody like Lindsay has both the experience, the legs, and the will to make it this whole time in this tournament. So a huge congratulations to all of the players who made this roster. We are so excited to watch this team head to France and fight for a gold medal. The tournament kicks off on July 25th, and the U.S. are playing Zambia first in Group B. We here at the Women's Game have so much Olympics content coming your way this summer, so please make sure that you are subscribed to this YouTube channel and make sure you're following along with us on social media at Women's Game MIB. Thank you all so much for being here, and go USA!